Hello and welcome to another slice of Daily Bread. I'm so glad that you have joined us. Today's devotional will be brought to us by Pastor James Ash. Pastor James, welcome back to Daily Bread. Glad to be here. Now, as we always do, let's open with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we are gracious and grateful for your watch care and your love towards each one of us. And Lord, it's our desire to get to know you more closely through today's study. And so Lord, I pray for your Holy Spirit to guide us. We thank you in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Maybe you prayed this prayer when you were a boy or a girl and you were kneeling down by your bed before you went to sleep and you ended your prayer with this phrase and bless all the missionaries and the call porters. Well, if that was the case, then I just want to let you know that those prayers for the missionaries really do make a difference. Today we're talking about missions. You know, who was the greatest missionary of all? I don't think you have to think about it very long to realize that Jesus set the example for missions. But let me ask a question. What is it that makes a missionary? Is, it, is a missionary someone who goes a long distance? Well, if that's the case, no one went further a further distance than Jesus who went from heaven to earth. We're talking billions of light years. And, and then when you, when you talk about culture, a change of culture? Well, generally, is, is a missionary someone who goes to another foreign culture? Well, there's no bigger culture shock or culture difference than from heaven to earth. But let me suggest that that's not what makes a missionary. If you boil missionary down, it would be this one thing. And this comes from the book Desire of Ages, page 70. This is speaking of Jesus. From his earliest years, he was possessed of one purpose. He lived to bless others. Now just let that register for a little bit. He lived to bless others. Now Jesus said this in numerous different ways. He said in Mark chapter 10, verse 45, the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. In Luke chapter 19, verse 10, Jesus says, the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which is lost. So a missionary is one who lives to bless others. Now I remember when I was a boy, my family had moved to Weimar. Now Weimar is in Northern California and there's a school there. Um, and my father was the principal of the academy. Now I was in the fifth grade and so, you know, kids who are, you know, about 12 or 13 years of age, they like to explore in the woods. And there was lots of property on the, this Weimar campus and lots of manzanita and ponderosa pines. And so uh, we would go around and explore. And uh, one day we were back, kind of back in the back part of the, the property and we discovered a flume. Now, for those of you who don't know, a flume is an artificial stream. It's a man-made stream. In fact, it, it, the banks of the stream are man-made. Instead of uh, a, a stream going across the ground, it's actually the walls. It has walls. And so this flume, we saw it from a distance, and when we came up to it, we noticed to our delight that it was filled with fast-flowing water. And then we got an idea. You know what? We're going to get some inner tubes and we're going to go sailing down this flume and we're just going to have a grand old time. Well, unfortunately, some, some of the word got out and the adults quickly kiboshed our plans. But I noticed that during the driest part of the summer when it was just dry and parched all around, this flume was filled with water. So it's the same way. The church is to be a channel of for God's blessing to a parched and a thirsty world. You know, and so we as Christians, as missionaries, because trust me, if, if God, God is calling us to be missionaries for him, to channel his love and his blessings to a dry and a thirsty world. So our prayer needs to be, Lord, help me to be a channel to receive your blessings but then to pass it on to someone else. 
Now, before I came uh, to back to the United States uh, about five years ago, my wife and I were serving in Guyana, South America. I was a missionary pilot. My wife uh, was a nurse for part of that time, but she was also a, a full-time mom and helping to support uh, the family. And it was an exciting time. But you know what led my wife and I to serve God for 11 and a half years? We wanted to test the validity of one verse in the Bible. And that's Philippians 4 verse 19. The Bible says in Philippians 4 verse 19, And my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Now we had heard of missionaries who, who had gone out in faith. And we said, you know what? We don't want to talk about other people's stories. We want to experience it. Does God really fulfill His Word? Does He provide for all of our needs according to His riches and glory? Well, friends, we are, I, I, I could tell you stories, and there's not time enough to tell you all the stories of how God provided for us. But just at the very beginning, when we made that decision, there was a close friend of our, ours who was a social worker. She, did, she wasn't making tons of money, but she said, you know what, I feel so impressed with the decision that you're making to go as missionaries, I'm gonna support you for $200 every single month. And she did, for many years, she supported us faithfully for $200. And you know, that was the beginning of our journey. Later on, as I became a missionary pilot in Guyana, South America, uh, and I started flying, I thought, oh, there's no way we'll be able to support our mission. You know, airplanes cost money. It's, it's expensive to fly airplanes here in the States, much less in a foreign country where it's hard to get parts and, and all this. How can we do this? How is it possible? You know what? Philippians 4.19 didn't expire on us. God fulfilled His Word. And, you know, God supported us. And by the end, by the last year that we were there in Guyana, we were supporting 43 different missionaries and Bible workers out in the fields. We were, and, and some of these Bible workers, we were paying stipends, and we were, you know, building churches. We built uh, three different churches there. And uh, just a powerful testimony that God can supply all of our needs according to His riches and glory. And one of the things, one of the statements that I really have grown to appreciate is Hudson Taylor's statement, God's work done in God's way will never lack God's supply. Now, while we were down in, in Lethem, down in the southern part of, of Guyana, one day I, I met some missionaries and they said it this way. They said, if it's God's will, then it's God's bill. And I love that. You know, God takes the responsibility. If He's calling you to do something, then He will supply the necessary means, whatever they are, whether it's, you know, talent, energy, uh, money, resources, whatever the means are, my God shall supply all your needs according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Well, that was the first lesson that we learned. We also learned some other lessons. We learned that what something that Jesus said. Jesus said, freely as you've received, freely give. In other words, when God gives you something, you are not just to hold it, on, hold it to yourself, but you are to pass it on to someone else. Jesus said in Luke chapter 6, verse 38, give and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over will be put into your bosom, for with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you." So God is not stingy. God doesn't say, ah, you know, I'm going to give you a little bit here. No, God is very generous, and He gives us what we need. But with that measure that we receive, we are to measure it out to others around us who are in more need. And this happened repeatedly. Uh, many times when I'd fly to the interior, I would fly, I, I used automotive gas in my airplane, and 
the wings, of course, had the gas tanks up in the wings. And so whenever I go to a, one of our projects, whether it was building a Bible school or building a church or, or maybe some Bible worker, then what I would do is if they needed gas for a generator or something, I would just siphon out some gas out of the, some extra gas out of the wings. You had to leave enough to be able to get back home. But I always went with extra gas. And so I would siphon some extra gas out, put it in a jug, and they could use that for their generator. And you know, I didn't, I, I, I just said, you know what, God has freely gifted this to us. We'll give it to someone else uh, and, and pass the blessings along. Let me share with you another powerful principle. This is found in Mark chapter four, verse 24. Jesus said to them, take heed what you hear. With the same measure that you use, it will be measured to you. And to you who hear, more will be given. Now let me stop right there. If you measure out something, are you gonna get that same measure back, yes or no? No, you will not get the same measure back, you'll get extra interest, whatever you wanna call it. So as you give, it will be measured back to you, and then extra will be given. Now watch this second part, verse 25. This is kind of cryptic. It says, for whoever has, to him more will be given. Well, we understand that. But now listen to this part. Whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken from him. Now what does that mean? How can, how can I take something from you if you don't have anything? Well, I want you to think about this. The heaven looks at a person if they have given something for the kingdom, are they looked at as not having something or having something? Well, according to the kingdom of heaven, and this is hard to understand, if you give something for the kingdom of God, you are actually not looking at, looked at as having nothing, you are looked at as having something. Whereas if you decide that you're gonna hold on to it and you're, you're gonna keep it to yourself, you're actually looked at According to, the king, uh, according to the Bible, according to Jesus, you're looked at as the person who does not have. And even what you have, or you think that you have, will be taken away from you. Now think about this in terms of the rich young ruler. Rich young ruler. He had stuff, didn't he? Oh yeah, he was rich. The Bible says so. He was rich, he was young, he was influential, and he, he was holding on to this stuff, and Jesus says, and he, and he says, good master, what must I do to be saved? To inherit eternal life. And Jesus says, well, what's written in the commandments? And so he listed them out. And Jesus turns to him and says, one thing thou lackest. See, according to the kingdom of heaven, he was still lacking something. He was holding on to stuff, but he was looked at as lacking stuff. He says, and so Jesus said, go Sell what thou hast, give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. And he looked and stared at Jesus and thought about that. And he considered and he wrestled. You could see the wrestling match. Jesus watched this unfolding in, in front of him. And he turned away, sadly walked away. And you know what? He lost everything. But you know what? In the kingdom of heaven, God looks at people who are willing to give as those that have. And so what God is calling us to do is to give. You know, one of the greatest things we can do for the missionaries, you know, not everyone can go as a missionary overseas. Some people can. And if God is speaking to you today and has been speaking to you telling you that you need to give your life in foreign mission service, there is a place that God has prepared for you. I want you to answer that call. But some people are called to lift up the missionaries in their prayers. And so when we pray, bless all the missionaries and the call porters, that is serious business. One of my favorite missionaries of all times was a man by the name of James O. Frazier. James O. Frazier wrote this, solid 
lasting missionary work is done on our knees. James O. Frazier was a man of tremendous faith, a man of tremendous prayer. He would pray for hours. He would cry out to God. He was a missionary to China and was uh, working for the salvation of the Li Su Chinese. And you know what? There was, uh, there was a revival that broke out. He was such a man of, of dedication and prayer that he prayed earnestly. And over a two-year period, some 60,000 people gave their hearts to Christ. That's an incredible missionary spirit. But you know, James O. Frazier realized that in order to have lasting difference, a lasting change for a revival to come, there needed to be a concerted effort of prayer. And so he organized his, his supporters back home to, to raise up prayer groups. And he, pray, uh, he raised prayer support through his sending body. Even his mother raised up a prayer group. Now he wrote to his, his friends back home and this is what he said. I'm not asking you just to give help in prayer as sort of a sideline, but I am trying to roll the main responsibility of this prayer warfare on you. I want you to take the burden of these people upon your shoulders. I want you to wrestle with them, uh, w wrestle with God for them. And you know, that group really did, took up that challenge uh, of, of praying for the souls of these people and revival broke out. Now I believe that we need to be praying for missionaries overseas. We need to be praying for gospel outreach workers. We need to be praying for Adventist frontier missionaries. We need to be praying for all sorts of missionaries in, in various places and missionaries here in the United States as well. The Apostle Paul says it this way in Romans 15 verse 30, Now I beseech you, brethren, for the Lord Jesus Christ's sake and for the love of the Spirit that you strive together with me in your prayers to God for me. There is a work that we can do, and that is to pray for the missionaries. Will you do it? Somebody, somewhere, it's going to make a powerful impact, I know, because I felt, I experienced incredible answers to prayer as a missionary pilot in Guyana, because I had praying parents, I had friends, relatives, church members that were praying and they dedicated themselves to pray for the missionaries. And so I pray today, I'm praying today, my prayer today is that you will understand that your prayers don't just disappear into the thin air, but your prayers make a powerful impact in the lives of missionaries around the world. Let's pray. Father in heaven, speak to us today through this message. Help us to see that it is all, not by might, it is not by power, but it is by my Holy Spirit, says the Lord, and that it is only when God's people will humble themselves and pray and seek your face. Then and only then will we see revival break out in our midst. Help us today to understand how important it is to pray. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.